Several years ago, the mammoth bone bed uh, needed to be moved from our south building to the north building, where we are now. And we noticed that after many, many years, 50 years on display, there was some ongoing deterioration. And so we began in the conservation lab to look at the condition and begin to retreat some of the problems so that it could remain on exhibit. What we have is the upper body of the mammoth, the ribs, the clavicle, scapula area, and the atlas, the very top vertebra. What's exciting here is this is exactly how the archaeologists found it in 1951, and in 52 excavated it with these large stone points, hunting points, in place in the bone. Ex very nice that the archaeologist in charge chose to pull the entire bed rather than just retrieve the points. That makes this particular object really unique and important and why people come to see how it is. However, uh, as conservators we noticed that there was some instability and at the that time, a few years ago, we began to stabilize the edges. We really wanted to maintain as much as possible intact because the soil underneath this bone bed is actually potentially a great study resource. And we know that a lot because of the photographs of how they decided to lift this as a block and then excavate it. This is basically the dimension of the back of the pickup truck that drove to the site. So this, along with some other artifacts, uh, constitute the Nako mammoth. It continues to be important, continues to be photographed, continues to be studied and filmed. What we've had to do, you see the cracks, you see the points. There was an interesting deterioration uh, deposit, probably reflecting a chemical reaction with bacteria and manganese. We've studied that, we've made it stable, and uh, we were able to identify what those archaeologists used to stabilize it in the 1950s. Then we had an exhibition. Um, in the exhibition, it was important to show not only the pieces, but the process of how did they do it, how did they get it out, and how, how did it survive. That was really important to go back to the photo archives. There was also one individual who had been a student at the time of that excavation. He was living and had, still had his student notebook. And we were able to go back and see his notes, see his photographs, which was his main job. So he's not in the photographs, most of them he took. And because of that, we had a very rich story and were able to fill a gallery with a lot of original photographs from the time of the excavation. In terms of conservation, it really helped us understand what was new damage, what was old damage, and how the archaeologists approached how to save it as much as possible.